Let's take a look at the first one of these five foundations of economics, incentives. So an incentive is a factor that motivates you to act or exert effort. Um, they're used to affect how people behave, how people respond. So for example, you get paid to do a job, right? Um, if you want your child to help you out by washing the dishes, one pretty effective way of doing that is to offer your child a monetary reward. Uh, if you help me wash the dishes every night this week, I'll give you 10 bucks at the end of the week, right? Um, so that's an incentive. You do X, I'll give you Y. Um, there are two types of incentives. There are positive incentives, which is what I just described, where you, you're giving your child a monetary incentive to uh, help do some chores, right? You encourage an action by offering a reward or a payment. You say to your child, we'll go to the zoo this afternoon if you'll help me clean up your toys this morning. Something like that. A positive incentive or an example that you guys are probably familiar with is extra credit for participating in class. I like to have a high percentage of my students participate in um, course evaluations at the end of the term so that I get a really good feel for how well I did and for what changes I could make to make things better for students. How do I get you guys to do that? I offer you some points uh, to do that. So extra credit um, goes a long way when it comes to students, uh, particularly college students. Um, so those are positive incentives. I'll encourage you to do something by offering you a reward. There's also negative incentives. So discouraging an action by providing an undesirable consequence or punishment. Um, so that same child, you want them to help you wash dishes. You tell them, if you don't wash dishes, you will be grounded this weekend. Right. So there's a negative incentive um, to discourage them from not washing dishes. Right. To encourage them to do what you want them to do again. Um, so another example is going to jail for stealing candy from a store. For So um, you give somebody a negative outcome or consequence if they do a particular thing that you don't want them to do. Um, there are direct incentives and there are indirect incentives. A direct incentive is telling your child. If you clean up your toys, we will go to the zoo. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I'm going to do in order to get you to do it, right? It's easy to recognize the incentive structure that's been set up. Um, another example here is giving a kid a gift if they get straight A's. Um, so if you get straight A's this, this semester or this quarter, um, I will take you to the store to pick out whatever um, toy or video game or whatever you want, right? Um, indirect incentives are... A little harder to recognize. There's sort of hidden incentives inside your direct incentive. So a secondary change in behavior brought on, brought on by the original incentive and maybe something you didn't anticipate um, when you set up that original incentive structure. So for example, you say to your child, I'll let you pick out a new video game if you get straight A's. You want them to work hard to study, to make A's, to do their best in school, right? But a sec an indirect incentive, a secondary change in behavior that you may have just caused, whether you meant to or not, with your direct incentive is that your child may end up cheating on a test in order to keep their A's um, and, and get that uh, reward that you've offered. So an indirect incentive is harder to recognize. Certainly important always to keep in mind, especially if you're a policymaker or a parent <laughs> and you're trying to set up a system of incentives to get people to behave the way you want them to, you need to think a second layer in there, or maybe a third or fourth layer in there, and think about what are you really incentivizing? What's going to happen if you set up this reward structure um, that you maybe aren't intending or didn't want to happen? Um, here. So those indirect incentives often often cause unintended consequences, unplanned results, um, usually negative and unwanted from an incentive. Um, so again, with government policy, you have to figure out how to balance benefits brought on by policy with potential unintended consequences. Um, an example is a law that prohibits uh, texting while driving, right? What is the the goal of that, the incentive is to get people to drive more safely, right? You, It's a negative incentive. You will have a fine imposed if you are caught texting while driving. Um, maybe an unintended consequence, though, is now instead of holding their phones up near their faces to text, where they can also kind of keep an eye on the road, 
people now are holding their phones in their laps so that they don't get caught holding their phones or texting, which means they're looking down more than they used to be, which means we may actually end up with less safe driving as an unintended consequence of this, what we intended to be an incentive structure for driving more safely. Um, so again, you can see with these examples, it's super important as you're thinking through um, incentives. Incentives are very important as far as getting people to behave in a certain way, getting people to do what you want them to do, not to do what you don't want them to do. Incentives are, are a huge part of that. But as you're setting up incentives, you need to think about what the indirect incentives might be or the unintended consequences of your original incentive. So here's another example um, that you, I'm sure you've heard is, um, is the example that higher unemployment may be caused by a government plan to provide higher unemployment compensation. Um, your goal is to help people be able to survive when they are um, down on their luck or out of a job, right? And so you provide unemployment compensation that helps people get by until they can find another job. Um, an unintended consequence of that might be um, if you're giving them enough money to survive until they find another job, maybe they don't worry about finding another job. Um, and maybe you end up with higher unemployment as an unintended consequence.